Hello everyone. Today is Monday, August 5th. It's 7.50 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm just getting around to making today's video. On my left, you can see the time and sales. The E-mini S&P currently trading at 27.82.75. What you're seeing here on the screen is our new website. It's not live yet, and but it will be soon. Just thought I'd give you a preview. We're very excited about this. It's going to be way more efficient. We're going to have a a free indicator to give away for anybody that registers on our website. Uh, it's going to have a more streamlined look, uh, more user friendly, and I'm very excited about uh, getting our new website going. It should be uh, just a number of days now. It was a really good day today uh, for the auto trader in our live simulation. Uh, there's a few standouts I, um, I'm going to show. But I also wanted to talk about which markets to trade and why you shouldn't get hung up on trading a particular market. Uh, being that I've been doing this a long time, I'm going to say that probably the reason traders develop an affinity to a particular market is because whoever taught them to trade had a uh, liking for a particular market. So they learned on that market, fell in love with it, and uh, you know basically developed a bias to trade that particular market, whatever they were first exposed to. That's my theory. Um, I'd love to hear your comments to see if that uh, theory is grounded or correct. But there's, there's more of a science to look at which market to trade, which provides the best opportunity, the best tick value for the dollar. I want to talk about that. So before I get into showing some charts, let's bring over some charts to demonstrate Okay, so this is a chart of the E-mini S&P, and uh, it's interesting to note that it only took five sessions for the E-mini S&P to come down to its 200-day moving average, which is a number that commercial traders look at. And so basically, the mark in five days, the market wiped out gains of the last two months and kind of bringing it to this uh, level of, of resistance here. So... On the bottom here, I have the average true range plotted, and uh, let me just make this a little bit thicker. Okay, so this is a five period average true range, which is basically the number of points that the daily range moves for the E-mini S&P, and you can see volatility has increased. The reason I chose five is because there's five trading days in a week, so this is for our purposes here, this is more accurate than showing the default value of 14, which is two weeks. So I've come up with an average daily range. Uh, it's only going back two years here, but uh, you know, once again, it, just to give us an idea here, I would say the average range is somewhere between 35 and 40 ticks, but I'm going to choose 40 ticks on the high end now that the market is trading closer to 3,000. The point value in the E-mini S&P, one point is four ticks. So it's $50 a point. The tick value is 1250, 1250 times four, $50 a point. If the average daily range is 40 points, so 100% of the daily range would be 40 points, uh, your potential profit if you achieve 100% of the range would be $2,000 per contract. And that's pretty good. Uh, this needs to be put into perspective. Let's compare a market that I really don't care for used to be a good market, but they changed the tick values. So now this market, uh, not one of my favorites, and one of the reasons we don't follow it. So I'm going to bring over a chart of the RTY. Now, of course, with volatility, uh, you know, the average range during times of higher volatility is going to be better, and then these markets may offer more value. But the Russell, for example, uh, the average range, uh, I'm giving between 20 and 23 points on an average. and that tr the tick value is now uh, five dollars and ten ticks a point make it fifty dollars a point times let's just say twenty three points is uh, actually okay so what market should you trade let's start off with the e-mini S&P as our benchmark the E-mini S&P here on a daily chart. I'm only going back two years, so we're just showing the daily range for two years. This is based on five days versus 14 because five days in a trading week will give us a better picture of the daily range, you know, by the week. 
So if we look back, you can see there's periods of much higher volatility, as much as 120 points uh, versus uh, you know, big period of way above what I would say is the average here. I, I haven't, you know, really averaged all the numbers. I just drew a horizontal line to kind of give us, you know, a, a pretty good guesstimate. And basically, I come up with, you know, between 35 and 40 points. So I'm, I'm going to go with the high end of the range at 40 points, being a, that volatility is increasing. For example, uh, today, the volatility was uh, 113 points right here, meaning, or 100 points, let's say, that's 400 ticks in the E-mini, it's quite a lot. But what we're looking at here is what is the uh, potential profit in a market based on distance move? So from an auto trading standpoint, obviously if you can make two, three, four hundred dollars with the market just moving 15 or 20 ticks, uh, which might be, you know, 10% or 15% or 20% of the daily range, then you have many, many opportunities in the day or, or a market that's moving that much distance all the time. So in the case of the mini S&P, the tick value is uh, 1250. There's four ticks in a point, so that's $50 a point. If the average range is 40 points, which is 160 ticks, then your potential profit, if you achieve 100% of the daily range, is $2,000 based on 40 points, and of course, much higher than that. So this is a pretty good benchmark, and the E-mini S&P indeed is a good market to trade, as most of the charts I follow in our templates are the E-mini S&P because of the outstanding val value and volume. I'm going to be adding more charts of the NASDAQ as the NASDAQ has emerged as probably the best market to trade because of its tick value to daily range uh, ratio, the, the, the distance it moves. Uh, the NASDAQ is the clear, uh, the DAX is the clear winner, but uh, the DAX doesn't have as much volume as the NASDAQ. So anyway, let's look at the NASDAQ uh, next. Okay, so in the NASDAQ, uh, again, you can see as in the E-mini S&P, these two uh, uh, main markets are uh, resting at their 200-day moving average, which is really an important number here. Uh, trade below is going to signify really bearish and could be, uh, you know, this would be considered a correction at this point, but I think we, can, we have uh, much more to go if we begin to close below this level and below here from a technical standpoint. Anyway, the BWT indicators, even on a daily chart, giving us excellent, excellent signals. The NASDAQ uh, point or tick value is $5. The average daily range that I came up with, if you scrunch this together, I, I think it's fair to say 150, 140, 150 points. I, I did 140 points uh, as an average here, and I think that's conservative, which is 560 ticks. So if the daily range is 560 ticks or 140 points at $5 a point, that's $2,800 potential profit if you achieve 100% of the daily range. That's better than the E-mini S&P, and the NASDAQ indeed is probably more volatile than the E-mini S&P. In other words, it moves longer distances faster and sharper than the E-mini S&P. So I think the NASDAQ is one of the best markets to trade. Now, let's look at a market that I really don't care too much for because of this ratio and this formula. So this used to be a really great market to trade until they changed the point value from $10 a tick to $5 a tick. And the Russell is a small cap in index, the RTY, and you can see now it's trading below the 200 day. So there are some bel that believe that this is a, a leading indicator, that then this index actually leads the market as the smaller stocks tend to sell off first before the larger stocks do. So uh, if, that's in, if that indication holds true, um, this should be interesting to see. 
but the value of the t a tick in the Russell is five dollars and I'm giving it a range of about 20 to 23 points uh, as your average daily range so just assuming uh, 20 points or even 23 points would just be a little bit more there's 10 ticks to a point so the point value is uh, $50 times 20 points would be $1,000 if it was 23 or tw if it was 25 points let's say it would be 1250 so your profit potential here is about 40 percent less than the e-mini S&P and quite a bit more less than probably about 60 or 70 percent less than the Nasdaq there's just the profit potential here is just not as good as the other markets I see no reason to trade it uh, let's put a little more per perspective into this conversation by plotting the volume on these charts okay so here I've plotted the volume and the average line here this is the average volume and again I used a five-day period so you can see with the market volatility expanding we have higher volume but I would say an average volume here is probably about a uh, hundred thousand contracts a day maybe a hundred twenty five okay so here I drew uh, a horizontal line across the volume and, and I'd say the average volume is a little bit above a hundred thousand on the Russell and you can kind of see that here and on a lot of days it's less you can see all the times the average um, trading way under that so I think that's very generous so needless to say this is a market I'm not really interested in uh, and it's a reason I don't follow it on the charts okay so here I plotted the volume and the volume average on the Nasdaq and I'm gonna say it's about hundred fifty thousand contracts uh, so a little bit higher than the Russell actually 50 percent higher if it's 150,000 versus 100 that's 50 percent more so that's pretty substantial much better volume on the Nasdaq than as compared to the RTY okay now when we look at the E-mini S&P we see why this is the most popular market there is a uh, basically a million contracts a day traded in the E-mini S&P on average and that's just huge so there is no shortage of liquidity uh, the best traders in the world trade this market because you can trade any size and get filled you could easily trade a hundred lot or a two hundred lot and get filled every time um, you do have some issues trading that size but uh, in any case there no problem getting filled here and that is why I run the most charts in the E-mini S&P there's tremendous liquidity and there's good volatility here as well let's take a look at the uh, crude oil in the DAX okay here we have a chart of the DAX and the volatility here and of course it's both above and below but I've given it an average of 200 points there's two ticks to a point in the DAX and it's twelve dollars and fifty cents a tick so it's twenty five dollars a point it's very rich a higher margin is required to trade, to trade the DAX and you will also need to tell your broker that you want a live Eurex data feed which is about an extra twenty dollars a month but at 200 points average daily range times 25 your potential profit if you reach 100 percent of the daily range is five thousand dollars compared to roughly uh, 2,000 in the E-mini S&P and 2,800 in the NASDAQ this market by far has the highest mar uh, volatility and it's one reason the auto trader in the DAX often does very very well because little short distances uh, add up to lots of dollars it doesn't have to move that far for you to hit your goal now that being said uh, volatility is a double-edged sword and it has to be respected and uh, you know you you your losses can mount up just as quickly but the this market is well suited to our software because it's very difficult to trade such a fast market like this without uh, automation in whole or part okay so here I've added volume to the DAX and I'd say the average volume is about 
eighty-five to a hundred thousand contracts, which is pretty decent, uh, considering it's the DAX. Uh, that's a pretty decent volume. So the DAX definitely a great market to trade if you can stand the volatility. I think the only way to trade a market like this is with a tool such as ours. Okay, next up is the crude oil on a daily chart and we can see the average uh, range of the market here I'm gonna say is almost a little above 150 ticks and uh, at 150 ticks the um, potential profit is 1500 to 1750 1750 dollars a day that's pretty good uh, that's about on par with the E-mini S&P and the crude oil is uh, a little different uh, that one point is 100 ticks the, the crude oil moves in pennies so the, the, the tick value is uh, uh, 0.01 and that's ten dollars a tick so there's a hundred ticks in a point so the average range between fifteen hundred and seventeen hundred uh, ticks and so one hundred percent of the da daily range would be between fifteen hundred and two thousand dollars a day approximately that's pretty good so the crude oil has good volatility uh, but I think it's more difficult to predict or to follow movement on the crude uh, or or go with the flow of movement on the crude unless you're really in tune with uh, crude oil inventories and other uh, announcements and factors affecting the crude oil whereas with the financial markets it's more the general economy and financials uh, whereas the crude oil is a commodity so for that reason I don't follow the crude as much as the uh, e-mini S&P and the NASDAQ I feel that uh, market internals such as the tick and the trend and volume can help you uh, determine technical analysis in the uh, USA financial futures more so than commodities. Com uh, trading commodities requires another type of uh, finesse. But anyway, these are all good markets to trade with the auto trader, the crude oil, the NASDAQ, the DAX, the, and the E-mini S&P and those are the four markets that I basically focus on that I follow in the E-mini e S&P. If a market's not traded such as the uh, the currencies it's that uh, I just don't feel these markets offer the best value. That's not to say you couldn't trade those markets it's just a matter of coming up with uh, attractive settings to trade those markets. That's all for this video. I'm going to make a separate video and show some charts with highlights from today and, and uh, show our spreadsheet. But anyway, thanks for watching.